start as soon as I hit that mark. All right. Well, thanks for coming into my space, Lisa. I'm really excited to talk to you. I think uh, we're going to have a really good chat about art and culture and your uh, practice as an artist. And I think, you know, like I said, when I initially met you, you get a lot of interesting things to say. So in your experience, um, when does one spot opportunities for innovation and how do you do that? For me, I think moments where I'm being really innovative um, mm -hmm. are probably caused by my laziness <laughs> or my desire for something to be more efficient mm -hmm. or better in some way. So I, by nature, I'm just a pretty impatient person. So if I can find a more efficient way to do something, um, then that's the way I'm going to do it. For example, you know, this, the, the initial drawings for my paintings, mm -hmm. I find to be very tedious. Um, when I'm trying to sketch things out and figure things out, um, what really interests me is actually the physical painting part. So if right. I can get to the fun stuff faster, then that serves me better in my artistic practice. So, you know, there's tools at my disposal that make my life easier. Um, digital projectors, um, my computer, things that I can use to get those drawings done quicker, to get the painting part started faster. Right. Um, I think that oftentimes innovation does come out of a necessity for things to be more efficient or to be better or cheaper, for example. Yeah. Um, when you're looking at technology, a lot of the newer technology that's coming out, it's it, it's more popular if it's user-friendly or um, yeah. a little bit less expensive, it's more accessible that way. Um, so, I mean, I know as an artist, <laughs> generally we don't have a lot of money. So, you know, when things come out that are easier to use and that are less expensive, then, you're all over then that's going to be my <laughs> friend, yeah. <laughs> Being an artist is about seeing outside of things that the normal person wouldn't see, right? Like mm -hmm. you have to explore, you have to investigate, you have to innovate, you have yeah. to try different things. Totally. Like innovation for me just is, I guess when I think of the word innovate, I think of just being creative, trying new things. Yeah. Um, that's how anything good in my artistic practices come about, mm -hmm. um, just by trying new things. Um, whether it's experimenting with different media, the things that I mix in my paint. Um, with the, oftentimes it's because I get frustrated and something's not working, mm -hmm. and so then I just chuck paint thinner at it or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, it actually leads really well to my next question: What Perfect. is in? What do you think is disruptive innovation? Disruptive innovation. When I think of just the word disruptive. Yeah. Um, I think of things kind of changing the status quo or challenging the norm, um, what we consider to be, you know, the accepted norm um, mm -hmm. in the art world. I think that's the way that art has managed to progress over, you know, the past several thousand years. Um, there'll be a status quo, there'll be something that you know, all of society has accepted is like, this is how we make art now. And then someone gets really sick of seeing the same shit over and over again. And they're yeah. like, I'm going to make something totally different. And most people aren't going to like it. And people will probably think it's a little bit heinous at first. Yeah. But then eventually that catches on and then that becomes the status quo. And then you get innovators who come in and they're like, let's do something different. Right. So, you know, it's, you've got like <laughs> people in the medieval ages that are painting things that don't look anything like people because they're not looking at the body. And then you have artists coming in that are saying, we want to look at the human form again and like, yeah. oh, it's very scandalous, <laughs> painting from the nude again. And yeah. then you know, you've got people who come in like Duchamp, who's sick of these like beautiful times spent on these paintings. And so he just puts a urinal on a stand and says like, this is art. My art is about ideas. The yeah. object doesn't really matter anymore. And so then people run with that. And you've got people like Yoko Ono, who are, she, oh, she had that piece in, um, Nuit Blanche, that was really neat. Yeah. And it's all just about the idea then. And so I think those are people that have paved the way for me to be able to make whatever I want to make because right. someone before has been innovative, innovative mm -hmm. and now I can take from all of those and, and paint whatever it is I need to make or sculpt or totally. make a performance art piece about. So. And so do you think that disruptive innovation can still happen today? Or is it like... Or do you look at it and you say, okay, well, it's way too much, like, postmodernism has totally screwed everything up for, you know, the, the average It's almost artist. like, we'll, like we've run out of new things to do. That, yeah. Like, I mean, I guess, I think that there's still room for people to be disruptive and to be innovative mm -hmm. um, in that way. It's getting trickier because 
it seems like anything's okay now. Um, but there's still going to be people that are doing things that are kind of outlandish. And um, there was one, oh, we did a pro I did a project in my last year, um, and it was about, um, my prof wanted us to do social, social, oh, me now, um, socially conscious art or that kind of thing. And, and so it's about doing projects out in society and considering it art. So there's yeah. a guy in the States and he bought a, a whole row of these, you know, the, like the little houses, like in the housing projects in some of the more like derelict parts of town okay. in the States. Yeah. Um, there's a, a fellow who, um, he bought out like a whole row of these things. It's like and, modular houses. Right? Yeah. And he yeah. slowly turned them each into something new and awesome for the community. Um, little galleries or places to make art or affordable living for families. Yeah. And now he's like totally changed the face of this street and it goes on for blocks and blocks and and they're calling it an art project. And some people are like, well, that's not art. He didn't make an object. Yeah. And so maybe it's not so much about making an object as it is making change in society and totally. being able to call it art. I think that's pretty innovative. I know. Know. I would say 100% that is what art should be doing right now. I'm Exactly, like, I, right? Like responding to things that need to be changed in the world. Um, there's so much that's going on right now, especially with like politics and stuff that I feel like the least we can do is comment on it or, mm -hmm. you know, give our two cents in yeah. our artwork. Um, yeah. We live in an age of, it's so interesting because like they, they talk about information age, but I mm -hmm. think it's more of a communication age. We're trying to be better communicators yeah. and we're trying to address uh, minority groups or people who haven't had a voice before. Mm -hmm. I mean, not everyone. There's people who are just, stubborn and ignorant and things like that but Ignorance i feel bound, but but there's more of a conscious ch shift to those things so when you mm -hmm. talk about that idea of this art project where it's about a community mm -hmm. that makes total sense to me because yeah. artists are supposed to be uh, like representing the people maybe that need to have their voice heard yeah um, how do you encourage innovation for yourself and for your broader community you just kind of have to be persistent and have a little bit of faith in yourself um, uh, maybe a lot of the, <laughs> the things in my life have kind of been happy accidents, but I think it's, it's about putting yourself out there and having faith that the things that you're making, yeah. um, if you're being really true to yourself and you're making things that you're interested in, you have to kind of trust that people are going to be interested in those things too, because you're, you're being very genuine and, and there are things that matter to you. And, and I think people can sense when you're being genuine and will have an interest in those things. Right. Um, I didn't think that I was going to get that show at Latitude, but it right. just sort of, some things have kind of presented themselves and I feel very lucky to have had those opportunities. Um, but I wouldn't have got them if I didn't apply, you right. know? So it's, uh, I think I would encourage people to be hard workers and right. to advocate for yourself and to apply for as many things as you can. Um, Cause then I think those opportunities will present themselves. Right. And so by being genuine, you're also willing to put yourself in a position where you might fail or fall yeah. or have like an existential crisis in front of the oh, world. I'm kind of going through one at the moment, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. cause it's, it's hard. You get out of university yeah. and you have to pay your bills and you know, I'll sell some paintings and that's great, but it's not consistent. It's hard to, to live off your art. Yeah. And so then I do end up working a nine to five, which kind of sucks my soul out and makes me die a little bit inside, but you have yeah. to pay the bills so then you can buy the canvases so then you can, paint on them and it's just powering through and knowing that at the end of the day as long as in a week I get to make some art mm -hmm. everything will be okay and just trusting that eventually uh, things will come together totally. as long as I get to keep making art it, things will be okay <laughs> yeah and that makes a lot of sense because it's, it's a balancing act but at the oh, same it's time hard, but it's hard because there's so many things that you have to either say uh, I'm going to sacrifice, sacrifice yep. or I'm going to put everything into this and mm -hmm. maybe it won't work out, right? Yep. It's, uh, yeah, being an artist is kind of a leap of faith, but I think I would be very, I would be full of regret if I didn't put my all into this. And, mm -hmm. you know, right, like right when I finished m my, my Bachelor of Fine Arts, I yeah. wasn't totally sold on just being a painter. Um, but everybody that I've talked to, all of, all of, even like the sessional professors and things that I've had, yeah. they're like, just just go for it man you're gonna regret it if you don't yeah. um i thought about dabbling in arts administration i even like i, I almost finished <laughs> the application to grab McEwen, yeah. but i just 
I just didn't want to. And I find if I'm if I'm putting something off and I'm putting something off, it probably means that deep down I don't want to do it. You don't care about it. I don't care about it enough, you know? Yeah. And so then I was like, well, maybe, maybe instead of spending this amount of money to go and do arts administration, I could spend that money doing my master's in painting. And maybe it's a little bit self-absorbed to want to go spend two more years just painting. But yeah. like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. So <laughs> can you name a skill or skills you have that have helped you uh, to move along in your field? And I think you kind of already answered, which is great. I, I wouldn't say that it's a skill, but honestly, a lot of the, the, the ways that I've become to be innovative have been because of impatience and laziness. Um, <laughs> I, I want things done right away, and I like I like instant gratification. Yeah. So that just usually means that I'm making it right away, and I want it to be made. And So I'll, I'll work on a painting for hours and hours just because I want it to be done then and there, and I want to look at it and photograph it and... Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say, like, that drive is what I was thinking of when you Maybe said... Maybe that's the word, drive, <laughs> yes, that's a nicer word. <laughs> and, and that, like, you use the word self-indulgent, which is, like, maybe a, not not necessarily like, the nicest word choice, but it's a good word choice because it means you're thinking of yourself. You're yeah, like, and I think, I mean, if, and if you're not considering your own needs first, you're not going to be useful to other people. Absolutely. Um, and if I'm not really thinking through the things that I need to be doing in my life or the things that are important to me then my art isn't going to probably be as genuine. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have to be selfish. I have to say no to things because, yeah. you know, my art has to come first. Um, I have to sacrifice a lot of things to be an artist because <laughs> as much as it doesn't pay very much, making art's kind of expensive. <laughs> and <Yeah>. So <laughs> it's one of those things where you sort of end up having to be selfish because, sure, at 25, I'd like to maybe spend more time with my friends and eat out and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I'd rather go and spend $60 on a canvas than $60 out at the bar. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I think it's okay to be selfish. Not at the expense of other people necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think my selfishness usually is. It's more I'm I'm a little bit solitary, so my selfishness yeah. is usually just having to say no to things. Um, a lot. If you don't make time for your art in a week, I find my free time just gets eaten up by, oh, family members want to have dinner, or this person Eat. needs this thing, or, yeah. you know? And so if I, I have to allot time to make art, and I have to, to look at it almost like a, like a job, you know? Yeah. When you, you get schedule. scheduled to work, you, you, don't, you can't go off and do other things because you're scheduled to work. So Sundays, for example, I don't work, so I, that whole day is for art making. No, sorry, Grandma, I can't come to brunch. I have to go paint, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so next question. Why is innovation difficult? We, some people get a little bit too caught up in being innovative. Um, and maybe yeah. it's not always about the newest and the best and the most efficient thing. It's maybe about putting time into things um, with painting techniques and stuff like that. New isn't always better. You know, I think that yeah. there's looking to the past can be just as useful. Um, techniques that I learned, you know, just learning about art history and like the Renaissance and, mm -hmm. and things like that, doing underpaintings, you know, not everything that I do is, is innovative or efficient. Yeah. You don't have to use translucent paint or, mm -hmm. or like fluorescent paint in order to make good art. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I mean, maybe some of the paintings that I make are not terribly innovative looking because I, 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 I like to paint. I guess in the realm of realism, mm -hmm. um, is that contemporary enough? Is it modern? Yeah. I don't know. I think though, you know, in this day and age, we have the luxury of being able to make whatever the heck kind of art we want. You can say, you can swear, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> you <laughs> you want to say, like, I want to be able to make whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> yes. That, yeah. I think that is the luxury of being an artist in the 21st century is I can make whatever the fuck I want. Um, and I'm really glad that I don't live in any other century other than this one because yeah. They wouldn't have let me be an artist, <laughs> totally, you know. So totally. I think I feel very lucky just to be living and making work in this day and age. As much as there's a lot of awful shit going on in the world. What role do you think the individual plays in innovation as it relates to culture? You know, and maybe some artists are a little bit more socially conscious or mm -hmm. are making more of a difference. Yeah. But I find that for me, the most genuine way for me to make art or to make a difference in society is just to be honest right. and to talk about things that are important to me and then oftentimes that will resonate with someone else. Um, I think that's why I love art making in general um, because you know it's individuals that are making something 
that is important to them or that says something about their life or the way they think and then you get to go and experience it and interpret it mm -hmm. and then it changes how you maybe feel that day or how you feel about something that maybe makes you angry yeah. or happy or excited or evokes something in you right. and I think that that's why art is so important because it's saying something and then people are receiving it and it changes them in some way. Yeah. Um, but the individual for me is everything. Um, I mean, yes, there's, there's collectives and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, but, but at the end of the day, we're all still coming from, from this, this, this is all that I know. And this is really all that I have to offer people. So for me, the individual is very important. Yeah. Um, so like good example mm -hmm. in pop culture, Yes. uh, I'm going to be talking about um, I have this other series I do it's called Crosstalk where I talk about film and how yeah. film r relates to life and how people benefit from storytelling as it relates to film and I think storytelling or sorry let me rephrase that I think that film is our modern day iteration of storytelling like yeah. we use film to tell stories to each other mm -hmm. and we are also influenced by film stories yes. in a large way so anyway so I'm, I'm going to be talking about film update mm -hmm. film adaptations in my next episode and I thought of the movie uh, 127 hours which is based on a real life story right mm -hmm. are you familiar with the I haven't seen it okay that's fine that's you don't okay. need to you don't need to know the story but the, the it's not the one where he cuts his hand off it is oh okay okay I've heard of it so, so the story is that this guy is you know he loves uh, extreme sports and yeah. hiking and he goes to like I can't remember if it's Arizona or somewhere but he goes yeah. to all these places and just like goes and explores these caverns and climbs and all these things. Yeah. And like, I guess what I'm getting to is that this story is about one man's experience, but it, it impacts people in a very specific and uh, intimate way. Mm -hmm. You're talking about how your art in, can influence people in a very, it evoke feelings. Yeah. So there's this one scene in the movie where obviously it leads up to him cutting off his arm, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I was watching this clip and this guy was talking, or this, um, uh, blogger or blogger or was talking about how you watch the clip without sound mm -hmm. and you're kind of like okay that's pretty gross or whatever yeah. but as soon as you add the sound in there and it makes like this screeching sound you immediately like it, it makes it evokes I don't even a, see it and I'm picturing it in my head and it, it makes me cringe right? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so art does that it yes. allows you to express um, These things feelings and things it makes people feel things and I think that's I don't know I've always just been so compelled by that you know mm -hmm. that that someone makes something and it means something to them and then I get to look at it and it makes me feel things it's yeah. it's like the feelings are contagious and they, they vary um sometimes I like looking at really grotesque weird fucking art I watched <laughs> last night I went on this tangent of like all these Marilyn Manson videos and oh, stuff yeah. like that which is super random but yeah. um his new album I actually really liked so I was okay. just going through and looking at all the things he's almost like a performance artist like the crazy shit that he's done on mm -hmm. stage and I was like man that's just so courageous and it's and it, and it made me feel like what I've been doing lately is pretty boring because I haven't been offending anybody and I haven't been being terribly controversial. Right. And I remember um, I, in my last year, I was I watched this video. It was called Bad Art for Bad People. And it's... <sighs> have you it seen that? the Chapman? Brother? Yes! Have you seen I that? I went and saw their exhibition when they... Oh, my God. In London when they were... Did like, you? Yeah. Oh, my God. The Chapman Brothers and every... Like, oh, my God. It just... Yeah, so there's actually a, a folio book that they made yeah. about the exhibition and yeah. then obviously they made a video about that yes. later on. And so it basically is just documenting all of this, you know, this really like obscene, crazy art that people have been yeah, making. And, crazy. <laughs> yeah. And and so are all the artists that are like involved in this thing. And it just mm -hmm. it makes me want to make more things that are a little bit out there and Yeah. So speaking of innovators, mm -hmm. uh, who are some of your favorite innovators? Well you know, <laughs> when I think of innovators, I'm kind of first of all think of artists because I'm like, man, these are people that are out there that are painting things that are yeah. interesting and cool. And so, you know, I've got my favorite artists. Yeah. Um, we, I, I like a lot of Romanian painters because they're painting a lot of really dark shit that just resonates with me. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian Genny, um, this Victor Mann guy I'm really obsessed with right now. I think mm -hmm. he's really innovative because he's taking... Um, the context of his imagery is quite historical, right. but he's painting it in ways that are, you know, blacks on blacks on blacks, and <laughs> and so I think he's being <laughs> very innovative in terms of it's like his color Klein, palette. but like for the twenty first yes. century. Um, <laughs> and then you know, moving away from just the artists that interest yeah. me because I could you know talk about that forever. Um, I think 
a lot of what influences my life is music mm -hmm. um, because I think music maybe even more so than art can affect my mood because I'm yeah. listening to it all day every day I'm listening to it as I'm making art yeah. um, you know depending on the kind of music I'm listening to sometimes determines the kind of art I make if I'm in a really bad mood and I want to listen to black metal and make some really like fucking intense painting yeah. then you know there's bands like you know Bathory and and Winder and all these like Norwegian black metal bands that I think made this really interesting music that affects me now. There's people that I think were really innovative in their time, like yeah. Pop is one of my absolute idols. Okay, I'm gonna pause you. Sorry. There. No, no, yes. I'm not happy. <laughs> okay, so for two reasons. For yes. the first reason, so you're talking about metal, mm -hmm. which I thought was like super serendipitous because I remember <laughs> reviewing this album for the coming week by this band called Amon Amar. Amon Amar? Their new album. Yeah. I love Amon Amar. They're okay. awesome. Breaking so I've metal. never listened to their stuff before. I'm like, I started listening to it. It's funny because like I've never really been... <laughs> Big <it's> into so, <laughs> metal. It's so funny to say that because it's not really true. Yeah, I don't true. love it or you hate it. I, but it's not really... some people. But it's not really true though because there's so many different kinds of it and there's oh lots of stuff that I have. A long time ago, I decided to start cataloging my music and albums and all the... Or, Are you like a record collector? Yeah. Yep. So I, I started cataloging my music uh, and I started collecting kind of cataloging my movies mm -hmm. because I have like, I have, no. I have, no, I have tons <laughs> of them, right? And it's yeah. like, I want to make sure no, I know awesome. what mm -hmm. I have. And anyway, so I found that I have lots of stuff that is like Technically this, metal, this, like this. Genre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I bought this album mm -hmm. on a whim yeah. and then I started listening. I'm like, holy shit, I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I would. It, and it's called some... metal or Viking metal. Like Viking it, metal yeah. is super exhilarating. I right. remember, I think I was in grade... 11 and I, yeah. I was in Banff with my family and yeah. I stumbled upon my first Amon Amarth album yeah. and and I just like you listen to it and it transports you to another place another time they're talking about crazy gods and yeah. blah, 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 and it just like I don't know <laughs> I think it's empowering as a woman listening to metal because there's maybe not as many of us mm -hmm. um, but it's just I don't know it's metal I sort of like was going through a breakup somewhat recently and I realized yeah. like for me, the cure to heartbreak was black metal. Because <laughs> I'm like, if I can just listen to this and feel really, yeah. like, it's it's just super intense. And so I think, yeah, I don't know. Metal's awesome. That is, yeah. <laughs> and going to see metal is also really, like, cathartic. And there's a sense of community. Like, I recently went to go, I went to the Slayer concert. And oh, yeah. um, Carcass was one of the opening bands. And I just, like, it took me back to high school. Because I remember, like, just being in grade 11 and listening to Carcass. And it just... I don't know. Happy. Yeah, it just like <laughs> makes me feel full of energy and yeah. and a little bit of rage, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then the other thing yes. you said about Iggy Pop. So mm. another interesting thing. Oh my I I reviewed Iggy Pop's new album last week. Post Pop Post -depression? depression. Yeah, which is about David Bowie. Did you know that? Is it? Well, like it's. I don't know if it's obviously about him, but it's definitely. Yeah. There's, it alludes to him a lot because it goes back to and I forget I apologize I'm not like I am a hip hop fan but I'm not like no that's okay I don't I don't even listen to like all of his seventeen he solo albums or whatever made a lot of music but he the like the Belgium series mm -hmm. or whatever like David Bowie produced yeah. those albums and yeah well they've worked together a lot mm -hmm. and I don't know I just have a lot of respect for the people that have the courage to go out there and be their authentic selves and you know be be whatever the result of that may be yeah. um, I think I strive to be creative. Or, courageous like that um yeah totally it's hard though as an artist because I, I i don't <laughs> as much <laughs> as i want to offend people i fear the repercussions of, of offending people yeah well it's... people are scary and people getting mad at you for making offensive things <laughs> i don't deal with confrontation well so <laughs> it's, no it's fair and it, yeah. it's 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 a struggle for sure i mean you have to figure out your place in things and... yeah and if you're gonna you know put art out there that's really offensive you have to be prepared for the consequences so we're at the final question, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited because I think this question encapsulates Lisa and fits in really nicely <laughs> with the entire purpose of the interview. And I always say this, I don't interview them. I always have a secret purpose for why I do interviews because I want to also have a theme, but then I want to represent that person and what I think they're about. Yeah. So my question to you mm -hmm. is, what do you think you will change about art? I mean, I'm not so bold as to think I'm going to change the course of art in any one particular way, but I think it's all just about making small incremental changes about things that are important to you. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's it's all about, like, you do things on a small scale, and then those impact other people, and then they do things on a small scale, and it, it just kind of has a ripple effect. 
Right. So I just think continuing to do the things that are important to me will hopefully encourage other people to do that too. Right. So then that by making art that you are passionate about, mm -hmm. then you can start to influence people. To uh, do the same, to make, make things that are important to them. And it doesn't have to be art, but just to go about their life in a way that is courageous and authentic. Yeah. And then you can get involved in other communities. Mm -hmm. And then eventually by being involved in those communities, you can then have your own community and then eventually yeah and have some kind of like I, I'd, I'd love to reinvent the gallery space a little bit and make it a little bit less formal and white walls and that sort of thing because mm -hmm. um, I, I wish that you know more levels of communities could be involved like you know think like what I humans doing and like the boys and girls club that kind of thing I think yeah. is really important um, because I know just looking at my dad as an example um, when you get at ri ri risk youth involved in things that are creative, you are giving them like a, more of a purpose. And I, I think it's just really encouraging. And I remember um, my dad and his, his ex-girlfriend, they would go to Africa once a year and they went to these small communities and taught them how to still walk and do all these things. And then they discover people who had like insane skills, like whether mm. it was a stilt walking thing or whatever. And so then these people would develop those skills and then stay in contact with my dad and then eventually like immigrate to Canada oh, cool. and then be like street performers and, and make new lives for themselves because of these opportunities that they were given. And so I think it's all about providing opportunities for people um, to be creative and to, re to, fi to figure it out what it is like that their niche is in life. Um, yeah. So in a lot of ways, it sounds like you kind of want to be a, a leader and a, and, a, and a mentor for people and a, and a uh, in my own, advocate. Like, small little way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not saying like but, in a, yeah, I'm not saying like think... Gandhi or anything like that. But like, <laughs> and I'm not, I don't mean that in like a like. No, but I, I think I I would like to lead by example, like what my dad does, because um, I just admire what he does so much. Um, yeah. And I think yeah, it'd be it'd be nice to be able to pass on the skills that I have. Um, I think that's why teaching is of interest to me. So that's really good. I think that's a really good answer. And I hope it wasn't like too terrifying to... No, no, <laughs> not at all. It's good. It's, I like talking things out. It makes me realize things that, you know, you haven't necessarily like verbalized, but that kind of yeah. floating around in your brain. And, but that's, and that's kind of the point, right? Mm -hmm. Is I, I want to give artists and like artisans or a platform, or a platform to... to talk about their, their stuff, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because at first I was like, innovation, like what a scary word. I'm not an innovator. <laughs> but, but then it, when you talk about, you talk things out, you're like, well, it's just like in little ways in my life, sort of. <laughs> well, you, you, you basically answered every question, like in a, in a way that made sense to you, which is, I think, all that I can ask for is... Well, that's... So good so yeah i, 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 I passed I, yeah and I, I, I like i said i really enjoyed talking with you and i think you have some really good ideas and i hope like i hope that what i am doing and and stuff like you appreciate and i hope that some no, totally i think what you're doing is so awesome because i think that as artists we need all the tools that we can get and if you are, are you know at getting information out of artists and then making it it public and and so that other people can absorb that information and mm -hmm. you're, you're such a service that is not really out there right now yeah and so i think you're definitely you're filling a really important niche in our community so we awesome you for that awesome well <laughs> hopefully we can connect again and like yeah, totally. maybe do something else and as i build my like directory of people i'll mm -hmm. definitely like slot you in lisa so that was and, but that's it. That's that's that's, it, that's, that's, all. that's all. So thanks for uh, yeah, coming no, in. Yeah, my pleasure. It was and, awesome. And I'll uh, we'll we'll talk again soon. So Sweet. okay, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs>